From the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel, with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents the Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. My name is Father Jack Lynch, and the televising of the Mass is made possible by a contribution from two donors. The first is an anonymous donor from Loretto, Ontario, for the repose of the soul of their loved one, Stephen Kowalczyk, and in thanksgiving for God's grace and blessing upon their family. The second is an anonymous donor from Toronto for the deceased members of her family and for world peace. Our sincere thanks to the donors for the gift of this telecast. And so we join with them in asking for God's blessing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. As we gather, we know that we are in the presence of our God, a God who has been very good to us, very gracious, and yet so often we have failed to express or manifest our gratitude by the way we live. And so we acknowledge our sin and we ask forgiveness. We ask forgiveness of God, and we ask forgiveness of each other. You're seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. O God, who gave the priest, St. John, an outstanding dedication to perfect self-denial and love of the cross, grant that by imitating him closely at all times, we may come to contemplate eternally your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. Then Elijah arose, a prophet like fire, and his word burned like a torch. He brought a famine upon the people, and by his seal he made them few in number. By the word of the Lord he shut up the heavens, and also three times brought down fire. How glorious you were, Elijah! in your wondrous deeds, whose glory is equal to yours. You were taken up by a whirlwind of fire in a chariot with horses of fire. At the appointed time, it is written, you are destined to calm the wrath of God before it breaks out in fury, to turn the hearts of parents to their children and to restore the tribes of Jacob. Happy are those who saw you and were adorned with your love, for we also shall surely live. The word of the Lord. Yes. Thanks be to God. Let us turn to you, let us see your face, and we shall be saved. Lord, make us turn to you, let us see your face, and we shall be saved. Give ear. O shepherd of Israel, you who are enthroned upon the cherubim shine forth, stir up your might 
and come to save us. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face and we shall be saved. Turn again, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and see. Have regard for this vine, the stock that your right hand planted. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face and we shall be saved. But let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, the one whom you made strong for yourself. Then we will never turn back from you. Give us life and we will call on your name. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face and we shall be be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. And after the transfiguration, as Jesus and the disciples were coming down from the mountain, the disciples asked him, why then do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? And he replied, Elijah is indeed coming and will restore all things. But I tell you that Elijah has already come, and they did not recognize him. But they did to him whatever they pleased, and so also the Son of Man is about to suffer at their hands. And then the disciples understood that Jesus was speaking to them about John the Baptist. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. Elijah, John the Baptist, and Jesus played distinct roles in humanity's journey and our relationship to God. Elijah and John the Baptist served as prophets and precursors of the long-awaited Messiah. But we recall also that as prophets, Elijah, John the Baptist, and Jesus experienced rejection. When I say that, I'm reminded of our own baptismal vocation and to follow in the footsteps of a man like John of the Cross. We are called to be prophet, priest, king, or prophetess, priestess, and queen, and that we should not be surprised at criticism. We are invited to ask ourselves, what does it mean for us as Christians to be faithful to that threefold vocation? And that question in the spirit of Advent reminds me of a story that Corbin Eddy used to tell about Kevin, a grade one student that he met when he was going to the schools. And he said, the teacher asked the class, what is the color of an apple? And most answered red, some said green, but Kevin chirped in and said, well, white. 
And the teacher tried to explain that an apple might be green, red, sometimes gold in color, but never white. But Kevin was quite indignant and most insistent. And he just looked at the teacher and he said very emphatically, look inside. In light of today's readings, that's really what we're invited to do, is to take a look inside and follow Kevin's advice. Look at ourselves and our attitudes and our motivation. We're, we're invited to look at our call to be priest, prophet, and king. It's an invitation to look at our reality, our lives, the facts, and face them with hope. In the gospel, Jesus is really quite blunt. He tells his listeners that Elijah has come and they missed him. You know, I was preparing for today, I was recalled a reflection done a few years ago by Diane Lopez Hughes. And she wrote that Elijah, the Elijahs in our lives can be very difficult to recognize. They can be unassuming and fairly humble. They don't announce themselves with any fanfare and usually don't demand that we pay attention to them or to their words. Sometimes it's only in hindsight that we know that they have touched us at all. And she continues, it takes tremendous courage to be an Elijah, to speak truth to power, to stand with and advocate for the disenfranchised, to go against the prevailing culture and to participate in restoring all things. You know, I've certainly asked myself the question, who are today's prophets? Who are the messengers of God to whom we are not listening? You know, in my own life, there have been many who call, many who challenge me to be more faithful to the teaching of Jesus. And among them at this present time are the indigenous brothers and sisters and the 94 calls emanating from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission the homeless on our streets and the thousands of refugees who have no home and often no hope. There's a loud, profound call to us as people of the church to be most welcoming to the poor and the disadvantaged and those on the margins of society. I'm so grateful that we have a man like Pope Francis, a truly great prophet, who has been gifted to all of us in the church and for me as one of the great prophets of our day. While a number of people have criticized him, Pope Francis continues his mission with great clarity, conviction, and integrity. But I also think of so many women religious and other leaders both in our church, both male and female, who challenge us with their generous commitment to the poor. Father Dennis McBride writes that Advent reminds us that we don't have to sleepwalk into the future. We have to remember the story of Jesus again, and that memory of love becomes the ground of our hope. The future holds hope only because we are convinced of God's actions in the past, and that's why we tell the story again and again. Each year, we relive the Christmas story of our God entering human history, and it should be a time to rejoice. Enjoy family and friends. The lights, the color, the hoopla, the carols, the warm greetings, gathering around the Christmas tree and a great family meal are part of our Christmas tradition and celebration. And we should be a people who celebrate and do so in the name of Jesus. God with us, giving witness to the joy of our vocation as followers of Jesus. Annabel Shilson Thomas a, wrote the following, and it was a wonderful reflection, and I copied it. Advent God, meet us as we face the darkness of our world, that we may embrace you in the shadows and move out to greet your light. Dispel our fears, increase our hope, brighten our light. Enlighten us as we search for truth, among the clamor of war, that we may have the courage to proclaim peace and determination to seek justice. Dispel our fears, increase our hope, brighten our light. Embolden us to cry out in the wilderness 
that we may find a voice to disarm power and a way to challenge prejudice. Dispel our fears, increase that hope, brighten our light. Guide us as we seek to make straight your paths, that we may guard against self-righteousness and look to you for help. Dispel our fears, increase our hope, brighten our light. Move us as we reach out to those in need, that we may respond with urgency and wait with patience. Dispel our fears, increase our hope, and brighten our light. I invite you to join with me now as we remember and join in prayer the many people who join us via television and their intentions. And for all those in the Daily TV Mass communi community that have asked to have a family remembered in this celebration or a Sam family celebration included in the book of petitions, we ask Mary to intercede with her son for us and may we also find strength and comfort in Mary's example as a loving and caring parent. And for this, we pray to the Lord. Lord I'd like to pray that each of us this year may know peace, peace in our homes, peace in our hearts, peace in our communities. And may that peace be living within us. May we find peace with ourselves so that we can be a people of peace who can touch others and transmit that sense of peace to others. And for that grace for each of us, we pray to the Lord. I want to remember in a very special way those people who are quite sick, who join us, who are in a nursing home, in a hospital, that we remember them and their caregivers, that God's blessing will be upon them at this time. And for all of them, we pray to the Lord. In all of this, we ask through Christ our Lord. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness, we have this bread to offer you. Fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. And by the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness, we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Thank you. And pray, friends, that this sacrifice, mine and yours, may become acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord and look upon the sacrificial gifts we offer Almighty God in commemoration of St. John of the Cross, and grant that we who celebrate the mysteries of the Lord's passion may imitate what he, what we now enact. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's truly right and just. It's our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the fest festival of St. John of the Cross, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words and preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy 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 Lord God of hosts heaven and 
and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. And yet you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Thomas our Bishop, and the entire church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him, with him, and in him O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And faithful to the teaching of Jesus, we pray just as he taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. In Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer to each other a sign of that peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. And blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and the blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Will those of you at home join with me now in this prayer for the sick? O oh my God, give me the grace of patience in my suffering and of submission to your holy will. I offer this illness in reparation for my sins and for the sins of the world. I unite myself with the bitter sufferings and death of my Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who in St. John have wonderfully made known the mystery of the cross, graciously grant that drawing strength from this sacrifice, we may cling faithfully to Christ and labor in the church for the salvation of all. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us go in the peace of Christ, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Amen. Have a good day. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. Remember, if you can't sponsor a Mass, any contribution, no matter how small, will help keep Daily Mass on television. And you'll receive an income tax receipt for your donation.